My name is Ian Clement and this is another video as part of our Cisco 101 series and uh, this will be looking at the uh, prefab manager or what's commonly referred to as spooling. So again, this works exactly the same, be it duct, pipe, conduit or cable tray. In this example, I'm just going to use a pre-drawn duct example here. And first thing I need to do is basically activate prefab manager. So if I click on prefab manager, we get this menu popping up here. Now I have, I have actually got some uh, existing spools pre-created. Uh, we're actually going to go through the whole process of actually creating these as needed. Now one thing, obviously this is a perfect example. I, I don't, e it's very, it's not easy at this point to see which, where I've spooled and where I haven't yet. So first I'm actually going to do here, if I go into the settings menu, we have load template. And this is one of the we actually provide. This can be modified. It is, if you notice, just a Revit project. But this contains uh, various tools, uh, sheet layouts, schedules, etc. Uh, that I may want to make use of. So I've just loaded that one in there. While we're on this screen, if we go to the, uh, I'm obviously working on duct. Uh, they are actually the same for duct, conduit, and cable tray. But if I go on a duct, this is basically. Uh, my options when it comes to basically what to process and how to uh, annotate that. So for example, if I want to include hangers, now if you notice on this one there are no hangers, but if I do want the hangers to be included, I can check this box. If there were any hangers, they would actually be included part of the spool. The other option we've got here, uh, number like items. So if, I, if there are two identical pieces of, uh, in this case, duct, share the same uh, piece number within the spool. So I'm going to say yes to that as well. Uh, all this area down the bottom here is when it comes to, for example, straight duct, what annotation tag should it use, uh, when it's duct fitting, what annotation tag should it use, etc, etc. Um, if the leader box is unchecked, the part number will be put over the top of the, in this case, duct. Uh, if the leader box is checked, you'll actually get an annotation with the leader on there. These are just standard Revit annotations, so they can obviously be modified, changed, edited, uh, they're just Revit annotation tags off there. So I'm going to leave our default set. And now I've got this set up. Close out of here. And yes. Um, now one of the tools or one of the components that that load application gave me um, is actually a view template. So to see where I'm actually going with this or what I've actually completed so far. Uh, if I go up to view and view templates and apply temporal properties to the current view. You know, these are our default 3D ones, but if I go back and look at all of the view templates, uh, one that was actually installed uh, with that load application is this uh, spool color map. And if you actually notice all it's doing, it's applying some filters. And these filters are basically on a color code spools I've co currently completed. Um, and then actually uh, it makes it a little easy for me to navigate around there. So this is the template I want to apply. So if I hit the OK off there, I get this. So I can very easily see which bits have been spooled, which bits uh, are currently not spooled off here. So if I actually want to, let's say I want to spool these two pieces, uh, I'll just select these, grab them that way. And from the, you'll notice the context menu at the top changes and you have this create spool. It will list out any of the prefixes I've currently been using, which are my SA and RA. I'm going to make this into, obviously this is part of one of those systems, but just as an example, I'm going to prefix this as test and say I start, want to start with spool number 01, for example. If I do the create, it actually puts that over here. And let me just do another one. Uh, maybe do this one. So I want to go from, again, how you select it is up to you. Um, it will it will not let you take up the same piece into two spools, obviously. Um, but let's say I want to spool from this point. So I, what I find an easy te technique is select the, where you want to start from, hover over the piece you want to end at, hit the tab key once, and then click. So that's essentially Revit's from and to selection set. So I want this to be my next spool. So if I do create spool, uh, it will automatically just sequence its way through. It assumes if I made 01, I want to make 02 next. Hit create. And obviously repeat as necessary. And you can see these are all being color codes we go through. Uh, the way this works is uh, anything that ends in one 
by default is going to be red. If it ends in two, it's going to be blue. Ends in three, it's going to be cyan, and just sit, cycle through the different color sequences coming off there. So I'm basically going to take this off here. Now, you have got the ability of editing this. Let's say it turns out, really, I should have had this piece as part of this spool as well. If I select this spool, I've got the ability here to either A, disassemble, which throws it away completely, deletes it essentially, or I can edit it. So if I choose the edit assembly, I've got the uh, Revit edit capability, so I want to add a piece to it. Select the add, select on the piece I want to add to it, and then finish. So we give that a minute for Cisco to catch up. And you see now that's included that. And the same applies to actually remove a piece. Uh, there's no limit to the number of spools you add into a, uh, a job um, using these examples off there. Um, so uh, let me just go back to the project browser. Uh, again, part of that um, load application we did initially, it actually added in these sheets. And these again are just our default example sheets. So I've got a default layout for duct, a default layout for pipe, uh, conduits, cable trays, etc. So if I open up the one for duct, just so you can see what this uh, actually looks like, I get to see this. Obviously, it's rather messy, um, but basically, it is a title block of your choice. It uh, is views. So in this case, I've got two views here. I've got another view under there somewhere and a view down here and schedules. Uh, again, these are all per your choice. Uh, you can organize these, you can re rebuild these, make these as need be. You can set the uh, graphical representations, how you want to see them uh, coming off that. So I'm going to use this format, which is uh, regard this as a template. So if I look on my drop down list here, there's my duct one. So I'm basically saying, take this pool or, or prefab definition and pop it, make a copy of this sheet and populate it. So if I hit the generate sheets, Cisco goes away. And based on the complexity of the sheet, of the sheet uh, how many views you've got on there and etc. That's how long it takes, but it doesn't take very long. And that's basically now showing me I've actually got a, a sheet available for that. So if I go into the uh, open, I get to see this. So you can see there, these are the only schedules. Now there were more schedules on the original sheet, but obviously some of those schedules for things like hangers, if there are no hangers, it won't create the schedule. So it's shown me here, I've got some, uh, uh, some duct, and I've also got a bend, giving me basic information about it. It's tagging them in the views. And again, the views are your choice. So I've even got an extra view down here. So again, you know, this is something you actually do, maybe create uh, auxiliary views that you may not always use. I've kept that out of my title block initially. And if I decide I want to use it, I can pull it within the title block. If I don't want it, just leave it outside the title block. Uh, it's filled out the spool name. And that there is a completed spool. Now, these are obviously just views and editing. So if I maybe I want to annotate this, if I double click to activate the view, just zoom in a little way, use just the standard uh, Revit um, annotations, annotation tools, so I can add any supplementary uh, information if I need to off that. Right click deactivate, gets me back out. And so these are, once these have been created, I can manipulate them, change them, uh, do whatever I need with them on these. Now, to actually do the printing, you can choose your printer down the bottom here. Once you have the printer chosen, uh, by putting checkboxes in the appropriate spools or, or we do need to, to, to actually print, and then just use the print command down the bottom here. Um, you can do mass selections by going to the, the root, I guess. So that would give me all of test spools. This will give me all of supply air. Or if I click on duct, I'll get all the duct. And obviously pipe will be broken out separately and electrical if you were uh, doing the electrical as well. So relatively straightforward process. Um, like I said, these sheets can be edited. You can change these to your heart's content. You can build new ones. 
Um, the only criteria or, uh, on here, the sheet name, if you want to make your own template from scratch, must end in underscore, uppercase T, and then lowercase uh, to, uh, emplet. So this is, this is critical. You'll notice here, all of these sheets end in the underscore template. When Prefab Manager gets them, it obviously strips off the underscore template bit. So now you're just looking at the, uh, uh, the, the basic name. Uh, the uh, sheet number is not important. That can be left off there.